We're here today to talk about application portfolio management and how UMT360 takes you beyond standard PPM to provide portfolio management capabilities to other portfolios that you may be interested in. Now, enterprise portfolio management, to me, is about bringing together, understanding the unique relationships and independencies that exist across all your business and IT portfolios and helping you improve investment decisions. And with uh, any business decision, financial intelligence is key. Well, it's interesting if you look at the Gartner IT key, uh, key metric surveys that come out each year, they look at spend across IT. This is a cross industry average. It can change dramatically. I believe in government, for example, it's drastically different. Applications are consuming around 35% of the total IT budget today, 55% going to infrastructure and the remainder being overhead. If you look at the application spend, around 50% of that is going to maintenance activities, right? So 50% of your overall application spend is maintaining that portfolio. From a cost perspective or a cost of ownership perspective, applications have a significant tail. Over 90% of the cost of your application will occur after it's been implemented. So after you've had the project to bring it online or into production, then you're going to start accruing over 90% of the cost of the application. So you have to look at that tail, that maintenance. For that reason, many organizations now are looking at the techniques to rationalize the costs or reduce the costs in IT and application portfolio management is one of those. Uh, and they're adopting application portfolio management best practices. But again, Gartner say that the standard or the, the average level of maturity today is pretty low, 1.37 out of a possible score of five on their maturity scale. Now, 1.37, that basically means you maybe you're maintaining uh, an application inventory and that's about it, right? And that information is probably stale. Before we jump into the application portfolio management capabilities in uh, UMT360, I think it's important to understand the benefit of integrating portfolios. An application portfolio management gets far stronger when integrated with your project and portfolio management discipline and vice versa. ITPPM gets far stronger when you're connecting those projects to the assets that they're impacting, in this case, applications. So if you look at a very simple example here, you start off by maintaining your application catalog analyzing your application portfolios, establishing and finalizing transformation decisions, whether to man maintain, enhance, retire, sunset, whatever vernacular you're using. Those decisions put into roadmaps and then teed up into your PPM. Those decisions result in projects. I'm going to go through the business case we just looked at earlier, portfolio selection, planning, execution, and then you're going to update your inventory. So there's a great synergistic relationship between APM and PPM, and both disciplines are better together. So a similar slide that I showed you earlier, but this is focused on our APM capabilities. When I think about APM, you have the ability to standardize your governance controls across your application portfolio. You get to build that inventory of applications, standardizing the metadata. And what's key here is you, know, you don't want to just capture fields for the sake of capturing fields. You want to capture metrics that you are going to maintain continuously. Application portfolio management shouldn't be a one-time event. It should be a continuous event, whatever cadence, whether it's yearly or half yearly, it doesn't matter. But you want to make sure you're able to maintain the data that you're collecting rather than just taking a dump. Another key aspect is understanding the relationships, how that application impacts other entities or other assets in your organization. So we allow you to map those cross-portfolio relationships that are so key, and we'll look at that in the demonstration. Being able to automate cost of ownership is important too, and we'll look at that in the demonstration. Run portfolio analysis to finalize those decisions, and then tee up those decisions through powerful transformation roadmaps so you get a good visibility across all near-term and future demand. So I'm going to jump into the demo. So we get these, the tile view. We're going to actually look at that application portfolio management. So if I click on the application management tile, we're actually rooted to a business capability dashboard. So when I think about how we built this demonstration environment out, it's based on a number of different portfolio types. We have projects, we have programs. We looked at the project and program relationship in the last demonstration. We have applications. We also have business processes and the sub-functions within those. So we're able to map our projects to our applications, projects that are impacting the application, our applications back to the business functions that they support, and the functions in turn back to the business capabilities. Now again, the beauty about UMT360 is you define your data model, right? So any object you want to capture, you can, and you can map the relationships. This is just an example that we have uh, in our best practices. So this is basically showing 
the business capability dashboard. Because the business capability is a living, breathing entity in its own right, just like a project and application, we're actually able to look at the importance of that capability against the strategy of my organization. These are the business capabilities that ultimately are empowering or powering your organization. So we can actually see here the business capabilities sorted by business importance. Because we can flow financial information through our model, we can actually see proportionately how we're investing relative to the priority. So if you look here with procurement, I'm actually over-investing relative to its priority. So you may want to evaluate that. So you can drill down in, into procurement here, see how you're spending. We'll drill down. You can see the different cost types here. We can look at application development costs. We can look at the operations infrastructure costs. We'll look at that in more detail in a second. But because you know, we're over-investing, we may want to see what applications and other assets are impacting this particular capability. So by clicking on procurement here, I'm going to be routed to what we call as a redundancy dashboard. And this is showing us our, all our business capabilities. We've got procurement selected, and we can see the sub-functions that are powering that capability. And if we look at this pie here, if I click on strategic sourcing, we're going to see the applications that are impacting strategic sourcing. We get some metrics coming from the inventory here on each application. So we may want to generate views that help us look at evaluating the performance of each application. So I'm going to go to the time analysis view. So the time analysis view here is generated on some of the metrics that we're maintaining in the inventory. We have risk on the Y, business fit on the X, size of the bubble is cost, and the color is the number of users. So the way to read this, and time is an acronym, so T stands for tolerate. And this is an inverted risk, right? So 100 is good, 0 is bad. So the top left hand, which is low business fit, low risk, we're tolerating these applications. The top right, which is high business fit, low risk, we're actually going to invest, I, invest in this. Migrate is the bottom right, and eliminate, which is high risk, low business fit, is E for eliminate, right? So this is just buckets that you can segment your applications in, which may suggest an investment decision. It may suggest you don't have to do that, but it's going to bucket them based on their performance levels. So if we look here, we have the CLM analytics application, which was one of the applications we looked at in the previous view that is in the eliminate quadrant. So we can go down and make a decision to eliminate that application if that is the decision. So I'm going to click on CLM analytics, and we're going to return to the inventory view. So just like what I showed you with the project portfolio, with UMT360 you have the ability to define the governance workflows to, to manage any entity. In this case, we're looking at the application itself, CLM analytics, and standardize the forms that you want to appear in that inventory. We'll start with the application status report, which is going to summarize this in a little more information. So straight away with this report, we can see some key metrics, cost of ownership, license utilization, the business fit, the risk. These are the things that we saw in that time analysis, the number of users. And what's interesting is you have the ability to snapshot data in 360. At any point, I can run snapshots at an entity level, at an application level, across the portfolio. So in this case, we're snapshotting quarterly, so we can track these metrics, how they improve or degrade over time. And you see that in these charts here. You can see how the risk is getting worse, business fit is getting worse, resulting in potentially elimination of this particular application. Now, cost is important to us too. Remember, I had that metric about 90% of the costs occurring after the application it be moved into production. So we can get a lot, of, a lot of breakdown here between what is the application development cost, the project that brought it online, enhancements that are teed up for that application, versus the maintenance and op the, the OEM cost, the operational maintenance cost. So we, we capture that separately, and you can see the breakdown here between different types of projects. We can see TCO over time. It's a very intuitive view. So let's look at the associations view here. Of course, I could show you the details, but it's just capturing standard metadata for the application. When we looked at this in the business case demonstration for projects, it was quite simple. We just had project to program. But notice how this application is impacted by and is impacting many other things based on this associations view. We can see the strategic sourcing function that it's supporting. We can see other applications that it relates to. We can see the development projects that have been teed up for this application, and even a bucket for capturing OEM expenditure. So it is key. When I think about UMT360, it's the functional relationships, being able to bind together different portfolios. 
It's being able then to aggregate cost information through those relationships. So you can see here how cost is being aggregated. And then there's a, the concept of time-based views, and we'll look at that in the roadmap in a second. So the costs for this application are coming from the projects, the maintenance expenditure associated. So this is being dynamically aggregated based on the underlying entities that are impacting it. Now, we saw in the time analysis the business fit and the risk assessment. And again, when I showed you the project business case, we looked at a risk survey. This is just the same survey infrastructure allowing me to build any number of surveys. So here we have a survey for business fit. User comes in, completes it, get, generates a score. That score persists with that application through its lifetime, can change, and we track the changes through snapshots. Same for risk. Now let's take a look at the roadmap. So this is bringing the concept of time-based relationships to play. So what the roadmap and the way to look at this roadmap is at the bottom here we have our application we're looking at, CLM Analytics, and we can see all the other things across portfolios that it is related to. So we can see the projects that have impacted it. For simplicity purposes, we already created the, the CLM Analytics retirement project to get rid of this application. We can see the applications that it relates to. We can even see the strategic sourcing function that it relates to. And what you're able to do is capture decisions. So the decision we took for this application was to eliminate it. So I, these milestones represent a decision, and those decisions in turn can map to other entities. And so you can keep an auditable record of those decisions. The decision we're taking here is to retire that application. But everything's connected, right? So I can go from here, and I can take a look at this was the project that brought it online. So here we're now looking at the project that brought this application online. We've just moved. Now what, you, what I'll confirm here is that we're now in Project Server looking at you know, a project record with UMT360 capabilities extending it. When I'm here, I'm actually looking at an application being managed in SharePoint. So the experience is seamless. I'm able to move between the two environments. I'm able to transfer data between the two environments. It is very seamless and very cool. So. Let's take a look at how you can make a decision. We've already got the decision captured in here. Here's a list of decisions which are auditable and snapshotted. So if I just open up the retirement decision, you come in simply, capture the decision, a description, when, it, when it's going to occur, the decision when, when the decision was taken, when you think it's going to occur, and then you can map that decision if you have a project created to the project. It's just binding everything together. And from that point on, obviously, we're in the world of PPM. That decision is going to vie for inclusion in the portfolio alongside other investments that have been teed up. But we're moving away from kind of a project-based thinking to product-based thinking there. So we're analyzing the assets, the capabilities of our business, and then we're building demand from that, right, rather than having just a wish list of projects gathered and then aligning them with our strategy and optimizing and we're never really sure whether we started out with the right demand in the first place or whether we were optimizing just the, the best of a bad bunch of projects. So starting at the capability level, looking at how that capability empowers the business, understanding what assets empower that capability, then making decisions at that aggregate level is going to result in a better demand, which is going to be executed through or managed and executed through your PPM discipline. So... UMT360 is seen by Gartner as it has been for the last two years as a visionary in the integrated IT portfolio analysis magic quadrant. The IIPA magic quadrant basically is the emerging world of IT business management, how to bring together both your project, your application, your infrastructure portfolios, understand the synergies between these portfolios, look at financial information across these portfolios, make better business decisions to show more financial intelligence to the business, but also align IT better to the business too. So when I think about the integrated IT portfolio management journey, uh, we see many of our customers stepping through it in this way, starting with IT project and portfolio management. Once that reads a level of maturity, the next logical step potentially is to bolt on or bind in the application portfolio, very similar to what I just showed you. And things get better when you start to integrate these portfolios. Let's face it, projects shouldn't exist in a vacuum. They're generated to make change to something, bring something online, enhance something, so binding it to the asset that they're related to is important. And you know, at each step of binding these portfolios together, you're going to get more financial intelligence. So binding these two together, if we go back to those cross-industry stats, you're going to have a good comprehensive view of 35% of your IT spend. Introducing the service portfolio is the next step. You're going to get the 55%. Now, I would argue that obviously the applications themselves are consuming 
a lot of the IT services anyway. So maybe you know, by tying the service portfolio to the application portfolio, you'll, you really are going to get a comprehensive ITFM view. So that's the journey that we see many customers taking, but you don't have to follow that path. If you're a CTO and, and the pain point is IT service management, you can start with IT service management and bind in applications and projects later. We just looked at the application inventory managed in SharePoint and a project portfolio managed in Project Server and being connected and how seamless that was, compatible with both 2010 and 2013, and the user experience is familiar, seamless, and easy to use.